So we're on our way into a very somber and solemn place. It's a very special place. Uh, it's called Yad Vashem, and it is the Holocaust Memorial Museum. It just tells the very sad story of the Holocaust. It's really important for the world to understand that, and I think to come and actually experience and see, and uh, as we say, never again. As you go through the museum, it starts you at the very beginning of the store, before the Holocaust even began, and it walks you through every phase of things that happened, most of it which I had never even heard before, especially not in a chronological timeline. Places to commemorate different communities in Europe, different things that happened, uh, the children's hall, and so memorial hall, and so on. Yad Vashem, it's not only a museum, but it's also an educational center. Bad Yashem was um, incredibly moving and sad, and I never really thought about it in the line and the accuracy that they presented the events. To me, I have it all kind of grouped up as an event, and it. But there, there was definitely a, some strategy and to it and so we walk through that and um, you know it was it was just the worst of humanity I mean to see that um, was really hard so um, but it was good it was like you, you know I'm glad I know this To be honest with you guys, I still don't really know exactly what I'm thinking and feeling about this one. Like, it's a lot to take in, it's a lot to really understand, and the implications of this are huge. I, I know I was definitely moved and impacted, and I felt, I left just feeling like I kind of got punched in the gut. I think that's probably not uh, uncommon for somebody that's the first time visiting a place like Yad Vashem. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to process. It's very somber and it's hard to really wrap your head around the fact that not very long ago, civilized, educated people did that to other people. Six million of them. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and it really, it's one thing to hear about it. I think when you go through Yad Vashem and the way they have it laid out, you really feel it. Normally I go through experiences that I can, I process them pretty quickly and I like, okay, well this is a conclusion, but this one, like this is different for me. Like this one, I'm going to have to just wrestle with, I'm going to have to think through and if I don't know when I'll come to like, okay, this is what it means for me, but it's definitely not something that like, it's unusual for me. I, I, I'm not just jumping to something, so I got to like, I got to process through this. This planet here is to commemorate those people that weren't Jewish, but risked their lives to save Jews. They're pretty special. That was intense. Like I knew a lot of the parts of the story, but I didn't often know like the extent of it. Wow, that was a lot, that was a lot. It got me personally to the place where I know I can say myself, never again. I totally understand why that's a, that should never ever happen again. Next up is the Supreme Court and the goal for our tour here today is to start connecting Israel's history. Uh, you know, we spent the first few days doing like biblical history and then today the Holocaust Museum and next the Supreme Court, which is I'm guessing behind me. 
it's reported around the world that Israel is this apartheid nation and everything. You know, it's interesting to note that here at the Supreme Court, we have actually had judges at the Supreme Court level that are Muslim Arabs. There are actually 1.5 uh, million uh, Muslim Arabs in the Middle East that live under a democratic, a true democracy, a democratic government. All 1.5 million of those Arabs live right here in Israel. There is, amongst the other 350 million uh, uh, Muslims that surround the nation of Israel, which is a very small nation, none of them live in a true democracy, nothing even close to it. Part of the building back here connects to like old, old part of the, of the story, it's like the old wall, and then they have it in front of us. This is the new modern part. So the building is kind of designed and architect to kind of reflect both their history and the future, which is kind of cool. About to go into a courtroom. Let's see what it looks like. I think the coolest thing that stood out to me in there that I wasn't expecting and I certainly didn't think was the case is that on the Supreme Court there's uh, a lot of different justices and they come from lots of different backgrounds on purpose. They have some Israeli justices but they also have Muslim justices and Arab justices and uh, people who were born in Canada and the United States and they think that that's really important that they represent everyone the best way that they can not just their own people they really want and this kind of aligns with what we saw yesterday with the Israeli army they don't care who you are your faith your background they just want to defend you and um, and, and serve justice so I'm glad that they think that way You'll notice that there are multiple languages that are represented here behind me. You'll see uh, Hebrew, of course Arabic is also represented here, and then English. So uh, it's just interesting to note the cultural diversity um, that is celebrated here in the nation of Israel. Here behind me you have a picture of, of probably the most famous uh, criminal trial in the history of Israel. Uh, a war criminal uh, by the name of Adolf Eichmann. Uh, he was a Nazi that was in charge of the death camps. With all this hardcore tourism going on, now it's time for lunch. This is what a mall in Jerusalem looks like. Pretty modern, just like ours, basically, except for maybe even a little cooler because it's got like movies all the way around. Yo, dude, we're about to have some burgers, some sweet burgers here at Burger Moses. By the way, the buns on these, the buns on these burgers are actually made of manna from heaven. So if you haven't experienced that yet here in Israel, you really need a burger from Moses with manna from A quail burger. <laughs> Next, it looks like we're going in this museum. Oh, cool guys, check this thing out. It's like a really big model of Jerusalem. I'm excited to learn about this. When we first came to that big model of Jerusalem, uh, I loved how Suri, our guy, like started pointing out, like, here's where this place is and that place is. Like, we could literally like, walk around the city without thinking, like, all day. All these Bible stories and all these events and things that are very significant, we can put them all together, like, in good context to how where this one is and that one, and and see it. Like, it brings all these all these stories together, and they all just make much more sense to me. A little bit towards us, you can see a stone standing by itself. This is where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is. Okay, this is the site. I mean, so if Jesus was crucified over there, I mean, if that's the site, this is where he was crucified. What was neat for me about all that was just understanding the significance in that whole timeline. And that out of such a place of darkness and destruction, and here in 1947, a shepherd boy throws a stone into a cave and happens to stumble upon the oldest version of scripture ever found that brought more legitimacy to this people and this faith than any other thing that I can think of in history. Yeah. For that to happen, the succession of that, coming right out of the Holocaust and, and actually in 1947, a year before Israel uh, declares its independence, becomes an independent state, the, the homeland, uh, for the Jewish people. It just can't be an accident. Yeah. They don't let you vlog in there. They don't let no video photography. This is really a bummer. 
book is really cool. The oldest book, the oldest Bible in the world. Prior to that is like in there too. It's like a thousand years old. And um, and then the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and that they're dated like over a thousand years, even older than that. So it's in there, but I'm not allowed to film or video any of it. Oh, you guys just have to come and see it yourself. Definitely encourage you guys to check it out if you're in the area. Just learning about like how different books of the Bible came together and formed what was a, a codex I just learned about and then became canon and scripture and how the books were selected um, and this is prior to like all the this is the story before the story I knew like this is all before then all that stuff really good stuff we got one more stop on this tour we're at the Knesset which is their parliament it's gonna be really neat why are you taking us here <laughs> what why are you bringing us here to the, to the, to the parliament yeah well, uh, first of all, it's it, the way the Israeli government is organized and the history of it is really interesting. But again, we're, we're trying to connect to modern day Israel and there's nowhere better than the heart of the government of this country, the Knesset. The Knesset is the, I would say, the, the parliament house in a sense, not exactly like a parliament, but it is the parliament house uh, of Israel where we have 120 parliament members who sits here and operating here uh, from all different parties, arguing, discussing things, voting about certain decisions. Uh, this is it, this is the Knesset. It's just interesting learning how other countries govern themselves in general, but coming here, being able to walk through the halls of the Knesset, be able to see an actual live session of parliament, and to hear, you know, really what their founding documents are, it really just kind of put a bow on the whole thing. and was yeah. like, yep, here we are. This place is here to stay. They have a great system in place. Uh, they have a thriving democracy. And one of the really neat things that, that I took away from that experience, first walking in and seeing the screen with all the members that are actually present yeah. was, and the first thing that they really covered, which is one of their values is representation and just the diverse group of people I mean, that's there. You, you've got Muslim Arabs, you've got Christian Arabs, Ethiopians. you've got Ethiopians. I think women. they said a third yeah. of the parliamentary members today are women. It's unprecedented. I think we're about to go to dinner and do something yeah, in I'm Jerusalem, but we're saying goodbye to our tour guide. He's uh, been with us the past few days. It's been great. And uh, we've learned a ton from him. Super thankful. He's got six kids too. He's got to catch up. <laughs> so I hope you will really go back home with maybe a bit, a little better understanding concerning some of the things here in Israel, past and present, I would say. And maybe we'll see you once again in the future. Father God, we thank you so much for Cyril. We, uh, we pray that you would uh, pour out your blessing on him. When you come on tours like this, it's about the experiences that you have, but it's also about who you have them with. And this is my first time hanging out with Shimon. I've known Lucas for a while, and it's been great to hang out with these two guys, but also to meet some of the other board members of Arise and uh, people who are coming in from different parts of the country to go through this experience together. When you go through like a shared experience, you have a lot of common language and memories and, and experiences that just like set conversations in motion that are like ones that I found like really valuable, uh, not just in terms of like spiritual, but even business and family and marriage, you know, just they're really, really valuable conversations. And that happens when you just have shared experiences. Great time of connection, great experiences. We experienced the historical, biblical stories of Israel. We got to see some modern day, we had interact with modern day Israel through our, our crazy experience at Caliber 3 through the Knesset, the Supreme Court. Um, all of this is leading up to, of course, the summit tomorrow. We're bringing 300 people from around the country to meet with 200 Israeli business people to try to generate more relationship around from around the world, right? More relationship, more economic cooperation, uh, trying to build bridges, build, build ties. Um, this this whole tour, this summit has been just a great experience for me. I, I really hope many of you can come with us next year, uh, experience Israel the way we did this time. Uh, join us at the 2019 Arise Summit and share in what we've been talking about this whole week. If you're interested in joining the 2019 Arise Summit, 
go to our website, ariseforisrael.com, and just sign up for our newsletter. And all the information that you'll need for next year's summit, you'll find in our newsletter. And if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, normally it's with my wife and kids. We're doing homeschooling, family, parenting stuff. Today I'm in Israel and wanted to share that story with you guys. But subscribe because my kids are coming back next week. So I'll see you then.